Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome back to Open Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast. I am your host, author Denise M. Walker, founder of Hope in Christ Ministries and Armor of Hope Writing and Publishing Services. Let's open up with a word of prayer and we'll begin today's show. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for this devotional. We pray for those that are listening. We pray, Father, that you be lifted up, O oh God. And your word declares that if you be lifted up, you draw all men unto you. So, Father, we lift your name on high. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise, God. Open our hearts and our minds, O oh God, and we will receive your word and write it on the tablet of our heart. That we won't sin against you. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, welcome to today's show. I am author Denise M. Walker and founder of Hope in Christ Ministries. And here at Hope in Christ, we are healthy, overcomers, purpose, and we maintain an, an, an eternal perspective in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Um, let's get started. Um, with today's topic of devotion, um, our topic for today is God as our refuge and our fortress. And many of us are familiar with this. Um, those two words uh, may come from Psalm 91 and verse 2. And we'll begin with that scripture. Psalm 91 verse 2 in the um, New King James Version states, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God and him will I trust. So many of you know that may listen to my Building Literacy and True Identity podcast know that I love to break down scripture. I love words. I love to um, really, really look deeper at the word so that I um, get a deeper understanding and that way that word or God's word um, and words in general will um, stay with me they um, will remain with me and so I wanted to take a look at two words that stand out in Psalm 91 and 2 um, years ago God gave me um, Psalm 91 um, it was around the time I became a Christian and um, God wanted me to to begin to memorize the entire scripture of Psalm 91. And, um, you know, every time I read it, it, it just speaks to me more and more. Um, and one of the things that I notice um, when you start off, with verse 1, it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And then it goes into verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. So, in order for any of this to take place in, in order for God to be a refuge for us in order for God to be our fortress we must first do what verse 1 says and it says dwell dwell in the secret place dwell um, and the word dwell that's not the one of the words I want to um, focus on but the word dwell just so that we can have some um, background information means to remain means to remain when you dwell that's why homes are called dwellings so that's the place we move we don't um pick up and go stay in the next house we dwell we have a dwelling and so um the word tells us to dwell in the secret place of the most high and then we can say of him of the Lord, He is our refuge and our fortress, and my God, in Him will I trust. I know that I can trust Him as I dwell there, and so we're gonna take a look at um, 
refuge and fortress a little bit closer. Um, first of all, for those that are not familiar with when the Bible uses Lord in all caps, um, the scripture and um, when you look it up, the definition, um, they're saying Yahweh, um, Jehovah, the existing one. Um, the eternal God, the existing one. Um, so Lord means they're being very specific as to who God is. Um, there's no many, many different gods. Um, the Bible is specific um, as it states. Um, Yahweh, Jehovah, the eternal one, the existing one. It, it specifically uses the words the existing one and um just to pause there for a moment i know i've said it many times on my podcast and i'll keep continue saying it the is a definite article that means that there is no there's nothing left to the imagination if i say go get the keys or the the some people say the um if i say go and get the keys off of my desk there is only one set of keys there's not two sets. There are not three. There's not many sets of keys. I know for a fact, if I told my son, for example, to go and get the keys off of my desk, I know for sure that there's only one set there. And so when the Bible says in the definition of Lord, when you look it up, the existing one that means that there's only one god and he's eternal he's the creator and so i wanted to focus and pause there for a moment so then we're going to go down to the word refuge refuge um i have um this week i have been looking at the word refuge and the word fortress and just really making sure that God is my refuge and my fortress. And so we're going to take a look at the definition of refuge. So here, the definition of refuge, when you look it up, it means shelter. And then it goes on to say from danger, uh, from rain, from a storm. Um, so again, a refuge is a shelter. Um, a shelter from danger, um, rain, or storm. And so here um, in Psalm 91 and 2, verse 2, um, it is using a metaphor. It is saying metaphorically that um, because we know God is spirit and, and we know naturally that God is spirit. And so when it's using a, a way of speaking or a way of writing, they're using a metaphor. Um, and they're saying that God is our refuge. He's our shelter. He um, shelter from danger, um, shelter from the rain or the storm. So we know that it's not literally um, necessarily storming or raining outside. And we go under um, God like an umbrella. We know that we know that the scripture is not saying that. We know um, that it's meaning that um, we can go and dwell um, and God can cover us um, as our covering. He is the shelter for us. Um, And rain and and storm, just simply, um, when we think of it in the the literal sense, we think of rain and storm of of the things that are going on in this life. Um, We know that we can take shelter, we can we can go, and and, and be um, out of the um, storms and 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 the pains and the sorrows and all those things as we take shelter or refuge um, in God, and so that's um, what refuge means. So a couple other scriptures that use the word refuge, I just wanted to point out. Um, Psalm 62 and 7 says, And God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. So again, Psalm 62 and 7 says, In God, in God, in Him is my salvation 
my glory is in him. Um, he's the rock of my strength. And he's my refuge. So all of that is found in God. All of that is found in God. And so that's why it's so important that we are we are safe to take shelter. We're safe to take shelter in God. Um, when we think about um, hurricanes and um, and things like that, and I'm for Florida, so I've been through hurricanes. Um, we we know that structures um, in a hurricane may not necessarily be safe. Um, that structure, uh, the roof can be ripped off. Um, many things can happen to that structure. It can be slung. It can be picked up. It can, many things can happen. But in God, He is a permanent shelter. He, he, he's not, nothing can shake him. Nothing can shake him. So we're safe there. We're safe um, as God is our refuge. And then Psalm 142 and 5 says, I cried to you, O Lord. I said you are my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Again, it says Psalm 142 and 5. I cried to you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. So this um, writer of Psalm 142 and 5 says they cried out to the existing one. Because this is in all caps. So I cried out to the existing one. And I said, you are my refuge. You are. And it means I can trust you for shelter i can trust to come and 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 be um not in the storms be protected from the storms of life the um dangers um and and all those different things so um i wanted to point out those particular um scriptures those two particular scriptures using refuge and so then we move to fortress Fortress is um, pretty lengthy um, in explanation because um, there's a psalm of King David where he um, calls God his fortress. And then we'll talk about how is God King David's fortress. So let's look at the definition of fortress. Fortress in um, the Strong's Dictionary says capture um the net of a hunter in a strong place and then i went and looked up a little bit more the definition of um a fortress and it says stronghold a place of security a fortified a fortified place man protected and walled and it's armed and it's guarded um so when when one is captured and taken into a fortress um is it's not easy at all to get out and so um, we want to keep that in mind as we think about god being our fortress um the net of a hunter um a strong place um and keeping in mind the word security the word security so we're going to um i'm going to read some um second samuel verse 22 in its entirety and we're going to talk about how um, was God King David's fortress. So before we read that, I want to focus on the fact that notice I started with refuge. Because before God can become my fortress, I first have to take refuge in him, shelter and I have to dwell, because remember the first part of Psalm 91 says dwell. So I take up dwelling in the shelter of God. Um, and then I can know him as my fortress. Then I can know him as my fortress. So again, I come and I dwell in relationship, reading his word and prayer. And, and all of us have to really, really hone in on our relationship with God through prayer and supplication, through our relationship, through, um, because we are in a time where 
there are so many distractions. And I know for me, being a, a business owner, entrepreneur, um, and also a, a full-time educator, distraction comes, but I must dwell. I must come and dwell and take refuge, shelter, um, and sit and um, build my relationship by simply coming to God, reading his word, and submitting through prayer and beginning to um, build that relationship. So we want to make sure we understand that then and only then will we know him as our fortress. So I'm going to read Second Samuel um, 22 where um, King David speaks a song to God. And it says... Um, using the New King James Version of the Bible. It starts with, Then um, David spoke. So this is a praise for God's deliverance. Um, then David spoke to the Lord the words of this song. On the day when the Lord had delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul, and he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my strength in whom I will trust. My shield and the horn of my salvation. My stronghold and my refuge. There's that word again. My Savior, you, have, you saved me from violence. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. When the waves of death surrounded me, the floods of ungodliness made me afraid. The sorrows of Sheol surrounded me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his temple and my cry entered his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of heaven quaked and were shaken because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils, and devouring fire from his mouth, coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also, and came down with darkness under his feet. He rolled upon a cherub and flew, and he was seen upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness canopies around him. Dark waters and thick clouds of the skies from the brightness before him. Coals of fire were kindled. The Lord thundered from heaven and the Most High uttered his voice. He sent out arrows and scattered them. Lightning bolts and he vanquished them. Then the channels of the sea were seen. The foundations of the world were uncovered. At the rebuke of the Lord, at the blast of the breath of his nostrils, he sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me. For they were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He also brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me, for I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness of his, in his eyes. With the merciful, you shall show, mer show yourself merciful. With a blameless man, you will show yourself blameless. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. And with the devious you will show yourself shrewd. You will save the humble people, but your eyes are on the haughty that you may bring them down. For you are my lamp, O Lord. 
The Lord shall enlighten my darkness, for by you I can run against a troop. By my God, I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. Who is God except the Lord? Who is a rock except our God? God is my strength and power, and he makes me he makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of deer and sets me on my on my high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can be in a a bow of bronze. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarge my path under me. So my feet did not slip. I pursued my enemies and destroyed them. Neither did I turn back again till they were destroyed. And I have destroyed them and wounded them so that they could not rise. They have fallen under my feet. For you have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued under my under me those who rose against me. You also given me the necks of my enemies so that I destroyed those who hated me. They looked, but there was none to say, even to the Lord, but he did not answer them. Then I beat them as fine as the dust of the earth. I trod them like dirt in the streets, and I shred, I spread them out. You have also delivered me from the striving of my people. You have kept me as a hand of the nations, a people I have not known and shall serve me. The foreigners submit to me, and as soon as they hear, they obey me. The foreigners fade away and come frightened from their hideouts. The Lord lives. Blessed be my rock. Let God be exalted, the rock of my salvation. It is God who avenges me and subdues the peoples under me. He delivers me from my enemies. He, you also lift me up above those who rise against me. You have delivered me from the violent man. Therefore, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the Gentiles, and sing praises to your name. He is the tower of salvation to his king. And shows mercy to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. Now that was very lengthy, and that was um Second Samuel twenty two one through all the way down to verse fifty one, and that was a psalm David um sang the words um as God had delivered him from his enemies. So let's talk quickly and briefly about um how was God his fortress because he he began the song with the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. So let's remember that um a fortress is um capture the net of a hunter, strong place. Um it's guarded, it's armed, it's protected, it's walled. Um and it's a place of security. Okay. And so the things that I wrote down, that I jotted down, that um, King David said, that stood out to me of how God, how he knew God to be his fortress. Well, one of the things um, that God did was he saved him from violence. That was one of the first things he said. He he um it's it was almost like an act of war against him and it was an act of war against him and um so god was his fortress um and a, and a lot of it when we listen it was figure figurative language so it has a literal meaning um when he's speaking about the different things so it said he saved him from violence saved um from his enemies um, he was saved from death. He was saved from death. So this was very, very serious for King David. Um, God sent the arrows out. So when I was reading, um, about, um, when he said God responded, 
Um, it sounded like God was responding, coming to war for um, King David because he had that relationship with King David and God came to war on his behalf. Um, um, God scattered his enemies, delivered, um, he was delivered from those who hated him. So he used a strong word there. The word hated is a very strong connotation. Um, he didn't say they disliked him. He said they hated him and they were after his life. They wanted to kill him. Um, the enemies were too strong. So God protected him. He knew that I have to get to the fortress. I have to make God my fortress because these enemies, the enemies that are after my life are too strong for me. And um, he was rewarded according to his righteousness, keeping God's way. Um, he kept himself from his iniquity. He kept himself um, and and I and I really highlighted that part because it is so imperative that we understand that the Bible uses a lot of verbs. When people, you know, kind of say, "Well, God in my heart," and you know, and all these different things, and the word says, King David says he kept himself from his iniquity. So that's basically he know what he did prior to, and God called him to him. And so in order to maintain that, 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 that relationship, that holiness, that righteousness, remember he said he was rewarded according to his righteousness. So if he was actually doing evil, could God have been his fortress and, and, and came to war on his behalf? He couldn't have. And so a lot of time in this new age um, teaching, this new age stuff that we hear, um, it's kind of like put it all together and God, you know, throw it up in the air and, and, um, you know, we, God will, you know, he know my heart. So I can pretty much do, you know, sometimes people say it because they're saying they, they pretty much do what they want. And that's not scripture. That is not scripture. King David clearly says that he kept himself from his iniquity. We know he didn't keep himself completely, but we know that he had to participate and that deliverance and God continuing, um, um, helping him to walk upright in him. Um, so he had, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that we can completely keep ourselves. I'm saying that we have to participate in our salvation. We have to participate in our deliverance. Um, God is a gentleman and I believe that, um, he desires us, you know, our will to line up with his will so that he can do the work in us. Um, but there's some participation. There's some participation in it. Um, if I am victorious in, let's say there's an, a, a test. When I was in college, it was um, not necessarily tests, but writing assignments um, that were astronomical that we had to do 25 pages, 30 pages. And that, that professor can give me that assignment and um, say, hey, you can pass this class as long as you do well on this paper and that paper never get turned in and I still don't pass that class. I don't, I don't pass that class at all. Why? Because I didn't participate. I have to participate in my victory. When I did my papers for school, when I, um, as an author, um, I can say, I want to be, you know, God has called me to, to, to write or, um, you know, God, um, has spoken that I'll be a best selling author. I, that can be um, spoken by God, but if I don't participate, if it never, if I never wrote a word, how is God gonna, um, you know, bring it to pass? It, I had to put the words on the paper. And so when people say things like, you know, we're just um, blindly walking and um, God is gonna do all the work. We have to participate. He will deliver. He will set us free. But we have to participate in our deliverance. And so that was that was um, amazing. So he that's how King David knew God is his fortress. Because um, remember, the key here was he was rewarded according to his righteousness. Um, and God, um, and then it also goes on to say he was humble. 
Um, and the opposite of humble is prideful. And um, so prior to, we know when we read about King David, prior to that, this speaking here, he wasn't humble. Um, he had gone after some a man's wife and he had um, actually, you know, just did some very devious things. Um, and so he wasn't humble at that time. But because he had been um, changed and, 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 and now walked in relationship with God, um, he it was different for him at that time. And then it goes on also to say he is, um, God was his power and strength. So we um, can see that the fortress, God being our fortress, is um, similar to a military term um, that he will fight for us. We can go and um, into that strong place of safety knowing that we just stand still and watch God do. Um, but we have to participate in um, in it. It's just simply going to God, submitting our lives to God. That's participating. Um, and, it, and, and again, it, it, it says that God avenged him. Um, and he was given victory. He was given victory. And we know that we know that we know that King David couldn't have done all of those things on his own, on his own. Um, but God being his refuge and his fortress. So the refuge was coming into the dwelling and the fortress was allowing God to fight on your behalf that nothing and no one can overtake God. And this is what King David is saying, you know, in the midst of it all, nothing and no one can overtake God, the existing one, the eternal God in our lives. If we trust in him, if we place our faith in him. And and I say that because I'm thinking of myself, you know, there's so many things in my life over the years that I have felt, you know, um, that you know, sometimes I felt was overtaking me. And um and I just had to step back and say, you know, do I trust God? Like I have to trust God with my life. But I also have to remember that I have to God rewards us, as King David said, according to our righteousness. So keeping his way, loving people, um making sure that I don't offend or mistreat anyone. And so we all have to do just that. Amen. And so I'm going to close with an affirmation that I wrote. And sometimes I write these. Um, just, you know, as I'm studying a particular scripture, there are times that I've written affirmations just for me to read and um, reflect and, and, and talk to God. And um, it says, Father, I choose to remain in your fortress. As you as my fortress, there, are, um, there you keep me from harm. There I am safe. I can't keep myself, but you can. There are like guards at a gate. So this fortress is like guard at a gate. Um, no evil or harm can get to me there. I have to come and I have to remain in your safety because only you, only you can protect me. Only you. God can protect us from, from things seen and unseen as we come and dwell. And then he becomes our fortress as we take refuge in him. Let us pray. Father, I thank you, O oh God, for your word, O oh God. I thank you for who you are. I pray, Father God, that your word would penetrate our hearts and we would walk them out, trusting in the living God, the eternal one, of who you are, God. Help us, oh God, to know you as our fortress, 
as we take refuge and dwell and remain in you. Father, help us to read your word, study your word. That's how we remain. That's how we dwell. And pray unto you. Draw near. Your word says, draw nigh unto me. And I will draw to you. So, Father, help us to draw. Not to people, not to things, not to places, not to stuff, but to you. That we may know you. As our risen Lord, as a creator, and the lover of our soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to Hope in Christ with Denise. Thank you for building your literacy through this podcast and walking in your true identity in Christ Jesus.